Welcome to Mining 901. I'm Aburengui, and today we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Benichi Songa, Executive General Manager for Africa at Data Mine. With a PhD in economic geology, Dr. Chisonga has spent his career at the intersection of mining, technology, and data driven decision making. Data Mine, a global leader in mining software solutions, is transforming the way mines operate bringing efficiency, sustainability, and cutting-edge innovation to the industry. Personally, I've known Dr. Chisonga for at least a decade, if not longer, so I can confidently say that his journey at DataMind has been one of expertise, leadership, and a deep understanding of how data shapes the future of mining. Welcome, Dr. Chisonga, to Mining 901. Can you just maybe start by introducing yourself and just sharing a bit about your journey in this world of mining? Well, um, I've been in South Africa for 20 years now. And since then, I've worked as an exploration geologist, worked as a resource geologist, and I joined Data Mine as a consultant geologist about um, 15 years ago. Over the last five years, I've been taking care of Data Mine's interests here in Africa as the executive general manager. The, um, on the business side, I lead a team of uh, support personnel, business development executives, technical consultants, and together we sell, we implement, we support our software technology. Lovely. And what sort of footprint do you have on the continent? As Datamine itself as a company has been around for over 40 years. So we cover about 60% um, of the South African market. Our primary market is here in Southern Africa, but also Central Africa and Western Africa are major mining districts for us. So there across the borders, we are about 40%. And now we offer one of the broadest offerings in mining technology across this whole business. So we tackle it from exploration to geology, mine planning, production and laboratories down through the plant, as well as operations and logistics. And as a company, we're no longer just a supplier of choice to a lot of our clients, but now we're more of a, of a business partner. And that kind of relationship just demonstrates the kind of commitment that we have as a company. Quite happy to hear that you, it sounds like it's over the full mining value chain, which is really good. So Dr. Kisonga, I'm interested to maybe get your perspective on just understanding the current state of mining now, on the continents. You can just touch on the, the state of mining on the continent from your perspective. The way I look at it, there's no mining in the world without Africa. And so Africa is really at the center of mining because studies have actually shown that Africa holds about 30% of the world's resources. And if you think of some of the major commodities, gold, the best metals, uranium, PGMs here in South Africa, in, in South Africa, Africa is quite uh, well endowed. A copper cobalt is also doing very well, driven by this demand in electrical, ele electric vehicles, but also the renewable technologies. But then on the other end of the scale, we look at South Africa and where we are. Uh, PGMs, uh, the dampener, diamonds not doing so well. And so when you look at mining, it's really both sides of the scale. Things such as uh, energy crisis, diminishing of resources, it's becoming very difficult sometimes to get to compliance things, regulatory uncertainties, as well as lots of social economic problems. So as a business of mining, it is doing well in general, but also we can't run away from the challenges that all of us face. Mining companies, especially in Africa, have tended to lag behind in terms of how much technology they use. And so here in Africa, there's lots of opportunities because as a lot of mining companies overseas embark on these uh, digitalization journeys, Africa is also slowly catching up and we feel well endowed ourselves so that we can support these, uh, these mining clients as they do these digitalization journeys. Uh, what progress have you seen across the different African mines and what challenges in your view still need to be addressed? It's a very good question. So the way we view it is that uh, it's not that African countries and African mines do not use software. It is just that they do not use it at a level where our peers are using it elsewhere. And so we believe that there's a lot of opportunity. And if you think of challenges such as uh, skills gaps, connectivity, poor infrastructure, 
those continue to affect a lot of uh, mining companies. But Africa has some unique challenges as a continent. So if you think about Africa, over 50 countries, over 40 currencies, over six time zones, and over 2,000 languages. And that's why if you look at our mining team, we operate in several jurisdictions. We speak English, we speak French, we speak Arabic. And so we're able to reach a lot of our clients, even though they use different languages from what is known. Uh, in your views, AI more of a partner, so a core pilot in mining operations, or do you see it as a potential threat to traditional roles? What's your take? That's a very interesting question. And I think uh, there's a short answer and there's a long answer. The short answer is AI, especially generative AI, is more of a partner, more of an enabler to the mining industry. And AI especially is helping technical teams to work smart, to be a bit more efficient, but also to help themselves do things that they couldn't do in the past. AI helps you to consume large amounts of data, geological data, operational data in real time, and thereby enabling you as a geologist, you as the operator of the software or the mining engineer to spend a lot of your, your IQ on thinking those processes that the AI cannot handle. It's not going to replace the job of a geologist. I went to your website and, man, I didn't realize just how many products you have. I kept scrolling to the right. At some point, I thought I was on a different site altogether. You clearly have an extensive product suite covering various aspects of mining operation. How do you guide clients in selecting the right tools uh, to meet their specific needs? And this is a question that comes up often. Because if you think about where we were about 15 years ago, we were a point solution company selling one or two products. But over the last 10 years or so, our business model has pivoted. And so that's why you find us occupying the exploration space. We find us exp uh, uh, occupying geology, planning, laboratories, as well as business intelligence. The mining engineer doesn't know what the plant is doing, but if you bring them together, so you bring the best of breed products, you put them together, you begin to see that there's actually a threat that you can drive through. So that when you do as a geologist, you are seeing your results on the financial spreadsheets because we connect everything. Importantly, the fact that a lot of our products share a single platform, so there's that seamless data transmission, reducing inaccuracies, increasing precision, but importantly, increasing confidence when the decisions are made. Really like that. I had a, a conversation recently with a senior mining engineer and they were telling me that they've been in mining for 15 years. And at their side, they've never been to the plant. And I thought, this is really where some of these uh, solvable problems uh, come from. But let's talk a bit about innovation. Well, how are you innovating to make sure that data mine remains relevant and that you continue to solve uh, real client problems? That is a question that a lot of software companies like us contend with, trying to meet the needs of the present especially when you work with current clients, but also thinking about how these same clients can benefit in the future. So I want to ensure that our software is optimized to meet the current challenges. That is the one angle. But on the other side, we are thinking of what, how can we make our clients work better by bringing in new technologies. And so something that is coming for us, it's a product we call Studio Geo. Studio Geo is a, uh, a geologist uh, package. So if you have ever done any structural modeling, you know how hard it is to do those repetitive tasks. But now, by following an implicit modeling approach, we're trying to make that easy, get the data in real time. So this application is coming to us in the next uh, few months. In addition to that, many of the people that like our products, one of the things they like about data mine software is the ability to use what we call macros. So these are little steps like scripts that allow you to get a good control on your data so that it's repeatable, it's auditable, it can be validated. Uh, Dr. Isonga, let's talk a bit about leadership in mining technology. Uh, you've been in mining, as you said, for a long time. Uh, what are your personal insights on leadership as it relates to maybe mining in a broad sense, but mining technology specifically? 
uh, within the African context. And so a lot of the leadership in this mining space was actually captured by advisory firms because they are the ones who are focusing on uh, business improvement uh, projects, operational efficiencies, improving recovery or throughput. And so the mining tech itself was missing from that table because a lot of consultants will come to you they will offer you these really good solutions, but eventually you are stuck with the data. You are stuck with your own stuff that is untrained. And so I have seen over the last few years that mining technology is actually occupying its own space as a leader, not just to the mining companies, but also to the advisory firms. Hmm. After 20 years in the industry or more than 20 years, having even gone as far as doing a PhD in economic geology, I'm wondering what it is that keeps you doing what you do, maybe at a personal level. What is it about this industry, this field, this arena, so to speak, uh, that keeps you uh, in the industry? If you can just maybe share some personal reflections. So I have gone through lots of different phases in my life. At heart, I still remain a geologist. And now, as a provider of the technology, what excites me, what I'm passionate about is making sure that my software is working well for the clients and that the clients are finding value both at a technical level, but also at a business level. The second thing, if I may, is I'm passionate about uh, customer support. And so we found over the years that it's not enough just to put the software in the hands of the customers. But it is important for us to ensure that the customers have a good user experience. Because once they have a good user experience, then they want to use the software more. And if they're successful, so are we. And at that moment, I realized that beyond the contracts, beyond the numbers, beyond the code, on the other side is a client that just wants the work to be done. And that's why I think it's, a, it's an African saying where they say, if you haven't carried your own water, you will never appreciate the value of every drop. I really appreciate that perspective because you're really bringing what I'm hearing is a very human-centric approach uh, to these mining solutions. How does one find yourself? How do we connect with your solutions, your teams? What's the easiest way to, to reach out to you? So obviously, we're a global company. But speaking about Africa in particular, our main base is here in Johannesburg. We are to be found in Ilovo, uh, between Rosebank and uh, Santan. We are on 27 uh, Africa Road. But beyond uh, South Africa, we've got a presence in Zambia. We've got a presence in Ghana. And we've got a presence in Morocco. And that helps us, even though we're a, local, we're, we're a global company, we're able to reach out to our clients at a local level and support them in their own language. So if anybody wants to see us, we can be found at, uh, at sales.dataminesoftware.com as well as uh, support.africa at dataminesoftware.com. Dr. Benichi Songa, Executive General Manager at Datamine. Uh, this has been such an enjoyable conversation for me. I've been looking forward to this for a long time just to understand in say, at least in my case, in the last 20 years, how far data mine software has traveled. And it sounds like you've traveled quite a, a long, long way, but it also sounds like you have plans to continue to innovate so that you can support. I mean, I think earlier you said 30% of global resources are on this continent. So uh, I'm pretty sure that your solution will continue to grow across the continent and beyond. Maybe Dr. Chisonga, any last words uh, before we say goodbye? We enjoy seeing clients. We've been in the business for a long time, and that kind of uh, time demonstrates a number of things that are key to our approach to clients. So it's excellent customer service, commitment, and reliability. So those three things, they work into what we have now coined as our mantra, Ubuntu for growth. Thank you very much for the opportunities to chat to you today. I couldn't imagine a better way to end the conversation. So until next time, this is Mining901. Take care. Cheers.